Alright everybody, welcome back to Shenmue 2. We're here in Kowloon and we've got a very busy day. I don't know where Cool Z went just now, but I gotta tell you, I'm not very uh, thrilled with the fact that he's apparently just watching me sleep. Oh god, it's raining. That's just perfect. That's really gonna set the stage. We've gotta find three Street Fighters and defeat them today, guys. It's a tall order. And, uh, let's see, before we actually run up here and get started, before I forget, one thing that I forgot to do in the last video was show you guys this move that we got from Kai, our father's old friend, the Predictive Explosion. It's a technique to feel the opponent's move using all senses. Now, the reason that I forgot to show this off is because I already knew that it's complete bullshit. It's actually one of the biggest trolls in all of Shenmue. You may notice that there's no button input here, and it doesn't show Ryo actually doing anything. He's just standing there. Um, that's because it doesn't actually do anything at all. It sits in there as a move. It popped up as a thing that we learned, but it serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever in this game. As far as I'm aware, it's just there to kind of show off the fact that Ryo can now see with his mind's eye, I guess. He's good at predicting what's going on in the dark. I don't know. I guess it's one of those things, maybe it's kind of like the White Leaf or the Mysterious Scroll from Shenmue 1. The kind of thing where like it was meant to have some kind of usage later in the saga and then they just never got to it, sadly, because Shenmue 3 didn't exist. <laughs> maybe we'll find out a couple months from now, guys. Maybe. All right, so we know about the three people. We talked to Cool Z and got the lowdown on Rod Stunt, Greg Moore, and Chunyan. Now, the thing about these fighters, guys, is you can do these in any order that you want, but there is sort of a preferred order. And I think I actually want to go into the tea break building. I think the one I want to do first is Rod Stunt, who I think is back here in the Phoenix building. I may have gotten this wrong, but let's see here. This dude has cool hair. I know. Let's see. Rod. Jackpot. Jackpot. <laughs> I am a little champ. Got that right, buddy. Huh? What? What? What are you bitching about? $500? Why didn't you say that before? Well, good thing I'm rich, guys. Yeah, me too, coincidentally. So yeah, if you don't have $500, you're not going to be able to do this. Right off the bat, you got to go make that money, guys. But no big deal. We're here where we need to be now, and uh, what the hell is this? <laughs> Rio is enthralled. Afterburner 2, guys. It is hanging out here in the Phoenix building, and this is the first time in the game you can actually access it. Okay. Well, that's good to know. But before we do that... We should play Afterburner 2, guys. This is another Yu Suzuki classic. Five bucks, well worth it, I'd say. I actually don't remember the last time I played this, guys. I'm going to be terrible, but let's try it anyway. Whoa, this is some, uh... 
There's some psychedelic graphics there. Afterburner 2. Taken off from Sega Enterprises. So this is a dog fighting game where we're going to be shooting planes and dodging shit and trying to kill everybody. I'm kind of getting used to the controls here. Oh man, they're like... It's a little weird to get used to, honestly. I think a big part of this game is actually dodging what's coming at you, which is going to be tricky. I actually might be better off with the D-pad. That's... Oh, this is weird, guys. So... I actually really don't like inverted controls, except when I'm playing a flying game where they actually make sense. But these controls are not inverted. I just got hit. <laughs> this is the one time where it actually makes sense to have inverted controls, but they're not. If I hit up, I go up. If I hit down, I go down. And that's actually messing with me because I feel like I should be controlling this like a real airplane. It's so odd. Yeah, so we gotta... Oh, Jesus. We can do cool barrel rolls and stuff like that. Ugh. I don't know if we can actually crash into the ground. I'm trying to avoid that. While taking out these motherfuckers here. Did I get hit? Oh, oh. I'm still good. This feels so weird. I keep hitting the opposite direction of where I'm trying to go. So, this is Afterburner 2, and fun fact, this came out in October of 1987. Oh, man. This is this a boss fight? No, I, I got my weapons reloaded. Okay, cool. I don't even know how to shoot these missiles. Uh, but fun fact, Afterburner 1 actually came out in July of 1987, so this sequel came out really damn quickly. Just about, what? three, four months after the original because I guess it's not really much of a sequel. It's actually just kind of a reimagining of the first game. They just essentially made the same game and just kind of added stuff to it. Um, that was a terrible, terrible run. I am, I am insanely bad at this game. But at least you got to see what it looks like. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Let's just... Let's just put in whatever and get off the screen. <laughs> nope, I have no need to do that again. You can't actually get a prize for getting a really high score in this game. I don't know what the point threshold is, but you get a little mini capsule toy of the game if you do well on it. I have absolutely no hope in hell of doing that. I'm pretty sure that was probably the worst run of Afterburner 2 that anybody has ever had in the history of video games. But at least I tried. So, we need to go to the fourth floor basement. Unfortunately, these stairs only go up. This might be the kind of deal where we have to go up and then down. Once we get to where we're actually trying to go. I honestly don't remember. Okay, that's blocked off. Oh, but here's an elevator. That's right. I think they make us come up here and then ride this elevator down for no good reason. It's just another example of this game just being a real weirdo when it comes to elevators. I guess it's supposed to build up the tension because we've already got the cool-ass music going in the background. But yeah, I don't know if I uh, ever really got to finish my thought, but basically Afterburner 2 and Afterburner 1, as far as I understand it, are essentially the same game. I think just, they just added a couple things to Afterburner 2. Like, I've heard that in Afterburner 1, you actually couldn't use your Afterburner on the plane, which is kind of odd if you think about it, because the game is freaking called Afterburner. Um, so I guess that's one of the things they added to number 2, and I didn't even really figure out how to do that when I was playing, but... It probably wouldn't have helped me. It probably would have only made things worse. <laughs> um, in the original arcade release, they had a regular cabinet, and then they also had the cockpit-type cabinet, which is what we sat in and played. And the cockpit would actually, like, like move around and jostle in, like, a realistic way as you steered the plane. So it was pretty cool for its time. All right. 
Looks like Mr. Rod's done here. Let's get this party started, guys. Yo, he did him Bane style. I will break you! Convenient. Here we go. Pretty small arena, all things told. This guy is a very tricky opponent. He's strong, fast. He's got some good moves. He will block a lot of things that you try to do. But if we're lucky, we'll be able to ring him out without actually having to whittle down his health. It doesn't always work out that way. Okay. Okay. That Dragon Spin move gets blocked more often than not. I'm trying to do some of my better throw moves on him. There we go. Machine Gun Fist. Oh, it feels good. Ha ha! I got him! <laughs> I tried to do one of those uh, leg sweep moves. And it just wrung him out. That's round one, but we gotta do it twice. Oh boy. Careful. Careful. Oh. Okay. This guy does like to block a lot of stuff that you do. Machine Gun Fist! Feels so cool. Brawling Uppercut. Always a good option in these street fights. You can get ring outs with those. Hey, there we go. That'll work. That will work. Yeah, okay, pal. Stew in your defeat. Remember it. In your most private moments, I want you to remember the one man who beat you. That was actually a lot easier than I remember it, guys. <laughs> I don't know if it's just because I've done a decent job of training Rio in this game, or if I was just on point. But we, uh, we took him out pretty easily, I would say. First time I played this game, I do remember having to do that fight a couple times. I guess the trickiest thing is not getting rung out, because that can happen to you very easily, just as easily as you can ring them out if you're not careful. But I would say that's definitely like the easiest way to win, rather than trying to you know whittle them down on health. Try and keep them near the edge and rely on throw moves and brawling uppercut. Alright, and as you may have noticed, we also got $500 for winning that, on top of the money that we had to pay to get in. So I guess we got $1,000 total, but we made $500 off of it. So, that's good. And next up, I think we're going to go for... 
I think we want to go for Greg Moore next. Let's see if this guy has anything to say about the fact that I just whooped his boy's ass. <laughs> Sorry about that. Honestly, it wasn't that hard. Your boy should probably train up a little bit. Right. So, next up is going to be Greg Moore. And I'm fairly certain I'm not in the right quarter to find him. This is going to be a bit of a scavenger hunt. Let's head off in this direction. He's the one that's in the Blue Dragon Garden, which is the area that we have been to before when we got turned away. If you can find Joy, she's also really helpful for directions and telling you where these people are. Black Heaven. Oh, that's actually not what I'm looking for just yet. There's Moonchild. Is it back in this corner? It is. Here we go. あの。Really? A thousand dollars? Thanks. So now you can see why it's kind of a good idea to start out with Rod's stunt there, because you'll make the thousand dollars that you need to go to the Greg Moore fights. Rod's stunt is the cheapest one at five hundred dollars, guys, so just start there and work your way up. Trust me. Look how cool this area is, guys. It's like a Roman Colosseum. Also, this music's dope. Greg Moore is kind of a weird guy, because he's like a biker wrestler, but he also apparently really likes butterflies, because he has that butterfly pattern on his vest. Wow, that was pretty impressive. You also may notice that the guy who just got tossed out of the ring there is the same guy who was getting his ass kicked by Rod Stun. So, I don't know who that dude is, but that guy in the blue vest there, apparently he just runs around all of Kowloon just getting his ass kicked by street fighters all day long. More power to him, I guess. Okay, I was going to do this anyway, but you're still being a dick. Oh. 
No mercy, guys. Rio versus Greg Moore. Who will come out alive? Ready, go! Oh! Oh, shit. Oh! Yeah, so he's sort of a wrestler type dude, and he's got a lot of hard hitting moves. And he's kind of like the Mongolian wrestlers in that if he hits you with, or if, if he grabs you with any of his throws, uh, you really, really risk. A, taking a lot of damage, like that, and B, actually just getting straight up wrung out from getting tossed out of the ring. So, that's most of the challenge with this fight. Okay, I gotta start taking this a little seriously here. Taking too much damage. Oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh, I thought he was gonna suplex me behind him. Ooh, he dodged that last one. That was good. No, 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 no. Ooh. Okay. Oh, no. Guys, that was a dope-ass move he just did. Oh, wow. I didn't even see that coming. Round one goes to him. Okay. He's definitely more challenging than Rod Stunt was. There's no question about that, I would say. Fuck that move. <laughs> Bitch, you can't block the machine gun fist. It's not allowed. That was pretty cool. Oh no, oh no! Oh, that's bad. Yup, he rung me out. That move is uh, pretty much going to ring you out, like, probably 80% of the time if he hits you with it. It's pretty cheap, honestly. So, the good news, though, is that you just get to retry right away. They don't bullshit you into, like, having to go make more money or anything like that. It just kind of acts like it never happened. Skip the cutscene, get right back into round one. Alright, this time's going to be different, damn it. Let him get you up against the edge like that. It's bad news, bears. Oh, yeah. He doesn't like the dragon spin. No, sir. Or the brutal tiger. Oh, 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 oh. Stop doing that to me right near the edge. It makes me nervous. I don't like it. Haha. <laughs> Almost got him down by the health. No, no, no. Ooh, that was so close. What? you got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's pretty cheap, if I'm being honest. He was so close to being defeated there, and then he just... He just ragdolled me off, guys. Damn. The hind blow strikes me as a move that could be really good in this fight because if you can get it in the right spot you might be able to just throw him off it really sends him flying the problem is that on some of these spots on the ring okay <laughs> on some of these spots on this ring there's almost like an invisible wall that prevents them from falling off and I don't know why it honestly just comes off as kind of cheap like uh there are certain times when it seems like he should have gotten thrown off and then he just doesn't because he's just kind of bounced off the side of nothing, you know? Alright, round three. Well, match three, I guess I should say. This one's this one's all me. We're going all the way on this one, guys. Alright, you can keep doing that to me. That's fine. That one doesn't really ring out that much. Oh, Rio. See how he kind of, like, changed course? He was being hit towards the edge, but he just kind of, like, ran along the side of it. Okay. Put myself into a bad spot. Oh, shit! I think I won that one. <laughs> we both fell. Wait, who won that one? He fell first. Yeah, I got credit for the win there. Okay, good. 
There's some shit going on that I'd never seen before in this fight, guys. This is kind of awesome. Ooh, almost had him with the high blow there. There we go. There we go. Yeah! No! No, no, no! Ooh. You're getting machine gun fisted for the win. Urgh, there it is. Beautiful. Sir, That's what happens when you bet against me, you some bitch. Never mind the fact that I actually lost twice. That's not important, guys. Okay. I always love the design of this area, though. I feel like this is probably one of the most emblematic places that showcases the history of the walled city of Kowloon, because this is definitely a place that looks like it was a military fortification a long time ago. And of course now it's broken down and crumbled and ruined, but I imagine that this is very similar to how the city actually looked back in the day. Of course, that's just kind of speculation. Because um, I've never been there myself, but, you know, from photos, it, it seems pretty accurate to me, which I think is cool. So, all right, that's two down, guys. And Chunyan, I believe, is here in the Black Heaven building, though I'm not 100% sure where. Now, if you've done this in the correct order, you should have money to fight her. Golden flower. Ah, uh, this must be it right here. Just a little bit. Hmm. What's up? Just a little bit. Where is this woman? If you want to meet her, go to the 12th floor. There's a door of the world. There's a door of the world? Jeez, don't oversell it, man. <laughs> the gates of hell. You will burn. Uh, let's see. God of Wealth building? I don't think I want to actually go to a different building. Let's double back this way. And just hit the elevator. Are they kind in this one? Okay, this goes to 11 and 13. God forbid it actually just went to floor 12. But I guess this will get us close enough. been a long time since I played these sections of this game, guys, so I'm a little fuzzy on the specifics of how to get around here. Oh, this feels so good, though. The memories, guys, this takes me back. I love this. I love this part of this game. This is actually going a little faster than I thought it would, if I'm being honest. Okay. And then stairs are right over here. Floor 12. Don't think we want to go over there. Yeah, here we go. This should do it. Building layouts can be a little bullshitty because, like, there's an entrance to another building right there, and it looks like it's the same building, but it's not. この女性を知らないか。ああ。ここにいるぜ。本当か？ここの無敗記録を持ってるぜ。いや、それで言ってたけど、グレッグモーツ。あの、ここに入るには二千ドルが必要だぜ。おお、オッケー。ああ、払お
死なねえようにせいぜい頑張りな thing I've always wondered about Greg Moore and Shunyan here is they make such a big deal about how they've never been defeated. But if this is how the Yellowhead recruit gets people to, like, test themselves for the Yellowhead, then how has he ever recruited anybody? If these people have never been defeated, who has ever passed his test to get into the Yellowhead game? That just doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Maybe it's all just a lot of talk. Maybe they actually had been defeated. Or maybe... He recently changed his testing process. I guess there's a million different ways you could explain it. Wow, this place is uh, a little different, isn't it? Actually, it seems kind of sinister. And it's that same guy in the blue vest getting beat on by the sexy cowgirl. Well, this is kind of a weird thing here. Uh, his character model is actually about to change a little bit. Here we go. That's brutal. That's cold. That's ice cold. That guy wasn't lying, man. They play for keeps around here. じゃあ、go then you know what's interesting guys is when Rio said merciless there I don't know what the actual direct translation of what he said would be but I remember that they subtitled that differently in the Dreamcast version back then he said something like either terrible or horrible and they changed it to merciless for this I don't know why so as you can see uh this fight's a little different. There's not going to be any ring outs here because of the nature of where we're fighting. That would be instant death, so it just kind of doesn't happen. <laughs> um, as Rio pointed out, this lady is a Jeet Kune Do master, which is uh, very similar to this character from Virtua Fighter called Sarah. I think she's kind of supposed to be like a, like modeled after her a little bit. But Jeet Kune Do is also the fighting style that Izumi used, if you remember her. Um, I think they're meant to be pretty similar, honestly. This girl is probably not quite as difficult as Izumi was. She's still pretty hard. As you can see, she's kind of kicking my ass right now. She's not a pushover by any means. That was a cross charge. Thank you, old man Mizuki from the harbor. Yeah, she just, she hits really hard and fast, much like Izumi. Not very good at, like, blocking and parrying, though, so if you can get your own hits in. She's going to win at this rate, though. I'm trying to do a counter elbow assault. 
can't get it done proper. Oh shit. Forgot about that. Good guy, Rio. Defeats you in a street fight, doesn't drop you to your death. Alright, Mr. Scout, are you happy now? Uh, Look at that pimp status, man. Of course Rio's not going to kill her, right? Like, that's just... That's not in his nature. The only person we're interested in killing is Landy. And we get it. It's a decent amount of money for that, of course. That's nice. Interesting thing about this, guys, if we check our notebook now... Ryu says, Defeated Chunyan, she'll never do such a cruel thing again. Eh, I don't know, that's kind of presumptuous, isn't it? <laughs> we may have made an impression on her there with our act of mercy, but she also may not end up caring at all. Maybe she'll just go right back to doing what she was doing. If we look back down there now, we can just kind of see that her and her buddy there are just kind of recuperating from what happened. But as far as I know, we never really get any kind of follow-up on that. She was just here to be a challenger and be defeated. And now that we've done that, our job is over. I don't know why they make all of these rings so difficult to get into and out of. <laughs> it's an interesting design, but it's the kind of thing where it's just like... You could have made this a little more straightforward. <laughs> Hey, this guy was smart. He actually bet on us. Alright. Good for you, buddy. You're the first smart person in this game. And basically an exact repeat of the meeting from yesterday. So we really have no reason to wait, guys. I'm actually going to choose this option today. And we're going to teleport straight here. And then we're going to wait. Because, you know, it's satisfying just staring off into space for five hours straight. That's how I spend at least 40% uh, of my days, I would say. Maybe that's why I identify with Rio so much. Radio. What did we put in here? Got to Dragon Street at night. I don't really know why we had to put that in our notebook. Whatever, Rio. You just keep being thorough, I guess. <laughs> Oi. Hmm. Anta ka? Kina. Can you make sure that the kids aren't here this time? Because you really didn't do a good job on that last time. This is... Come Right. He is sufficiently pleased. Looks like we have our end, guys. 
You may notice that that map was for B2 in the Thousand White Building, which is a place that we found not that long ago. Now we know what it's for. こいつ。白線路に地下に階。地下を通って高天堂に入るってわけか。なんか匂うな。これしか方法はない。俺は行く。大丈夫。ま、何が待ってるのかお楽しみってとこだな。そんな。<笑> <そんな。笑> I don't think it was a joke, Joy. <laughs> okay, well, they just dumped us into the next day unceremoniously here. Information, the time to meet the scout is noon tomorrow. Ryu has some time to spend freely before the promised hour. If Ryu decides to wait at Ren's hideout, the whole day will pass. <laughs> Wait here until tomorrow or walk around outside. What should I do? Okay, so I'm gonna hit quit for now, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I can come back and redo that anytime I want. If I just choose to wait. Let's talk to Joy. Joy. Not really. でもここは安全な場所じゃないはずだ。ワンちゃんに戻った方が。せっかくだけど、あたいのことなら大丈夫。そうなのか。この香港で上位様に手を出すような度胸のあるやつはいないよ。そうか。じゃあ、放っておい